Hello there, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, Marshall here, bringing you another one versus one cast. This time, we've got Klops in blue and Disgrape in purple. Klops representing lovely Ireland, Disc representing lovely Russia. So if I slip into accents, you can blame these two for inspiring such vocal exotics. <laughs> anyway, meanwhile, Disgrape on the north spawn of Cascade is going bots first into air vehicles second air. And uh, he'll probably get out two, maybe three bot fabs. Looking at the energy, probably three. Clops, meanwhile. Bots into air, into bots, into vehicles, bots, vehicles, vehicles. So a bit of a dichotomy there. Disc going heavier air than Klops off of the bat. And Klops going for three fabs. Probably into a spark, I wonder. Uh, and then bring out maybe a, a pelican to go and drop. Pro possibly spark or uh, boom bot. We'll, we'll find out. We will find out. So, interestingly, while you can see their build cues in the picture-in-picture, -picture, let's go and have a look around the map. So, let's take Klops' spawn as an example. Straight off, you get four mechs in your spawn, leaving you a nice bit of build space around. To expand, you've got two on this ramp here, which opens out into a very open area between the bases. You've got two which are slightly further away, but leads to potential control of this sort of structure thinking of I was trying to combine two words there and it didn't work and then you've got two off the back as well bear in mind this is a replay so sometimes mech spots don't appear like there's a fourth out the back here for example this two gets you closer to this four straight off the bat uh, and gives you options to defend from this sort of rear approach here the metal is very clustered on this map. Now, at face value, this is a very turtly map. You've got a lot of choke points that lead between the bases. And yeah, you can defend those with not too much problems. But the difficulties arise when you're trying to defend four mechs here. I believe there's a fourth one around here. And the four mechs on this side. They're much more open. And they are four mechs, so they are much, much more valuable to hold. And it's sort of control of this stuff which is out away from the bases, which will pivot the game one way or another. You've got some air-only metal between the volcanoes here, and then you've got some uh, triple mechs here between these, uh, these rocky hills here. So you've got some stuff that you can fight over, and that looks like there should be a second one about there as well. So you've got some stuff to fight over in the middle, as well as stuff to lock down in your base. But of course, these are all up on uh, on top of these structures, so you can use things like grenadiers to fire on top of them. And also the structures are in such a way that there are some places where you can go and drop some units. And uh, maybe get a back door from within, if that makes sense. Also bringing out the bombers. This grape showing his heavier air. Klops getting a bit of scouting off there with a hummingbird and a firefly, losing the hummingbird in the process. But the bumblebee comes in in a different angle, though. This grape, though, keeping the fab alive. Looks like we've had some kind of losses here already. A few sparks from this grape have gone down. This grape brings in his air and mops up those bumblebees. Really nice and easy. Klops, though. Bringing out the Sparks and the Stingers himself there. Sparks being the mainstay of the bot assault now. A bit more tanky than the Docks and the Stingers. Meanwhile, transitioning to vehicles. Probably a T2 vehicles in his base, I would expect. I reckon the Shellers will be very good here. And the Levelers just for the hard push. Vanguards to deal with the Turtle. We'll have to find out. So Disc has just the two air fa factories. He hasn't gone for a third. At present, Klops has taken his air only. It's going to give him a nice bit of uh, 
defensive, almost guaranteed metal there, if you will. It will be nice and safe for him. But he can only look across the map over here and see the Russian menace that is this grape trying ever so hard to defend. You see the problem? While you shored up some avenues, you have not managed to shore up them all. And yes, I know I'm going very stereotypical. Very stereotypical. It's not a problem. And I'm sure this will love this voice. When he watches this. With his caviar. And vodka later. You know I was learning Russian not too long ago in lockdown. As why not? I thought French, Spanish, pfft, standard foreign languages. Let's go Russian. Yeah, it's hard, folks. It's not an easy language to learn. Cases, yuck. Um, meanwhile, though, this using a single bumblebee to exploit the lack of anti-air from Klops there, especially on that front region. The uh, Fabricators have gone down. Klops here reaping, or rather sowing the, uh, the the seeds of of a lack of air dominance with his subpar air production. Needs just one more air factory to help himself out here. Just a little bit more air. Meanwhile, though, he has managed to take out, or rather, take control of a fair chunk of the middle of the region in between the bases here. Just tearing through it with a few drifters. Ops bringing back his fabricators to keep them alive. You don't want to lose them necessarily. And bringing them back to assist out some factories. Could do an extra bit of micro to get them out of the way while the roll-off time was happening. And instead they're now going to be in the fire of the drifter. Bop goes the one. And a second, will a third survive? It's like it. Fortunately, that assault isn't going to do too much more damage. Cops, though, attacking on the north. So a couple of fabs. Stingers going down. Not really the problem to the army at that point. This is another thing you can do when you're at uh, attacking like that. That uh, strikes me as Klops just saying, I'm just going to move it there. And then it was probably focusing his attention somewhere else, like moving this army out here. Or maybe a little bit here. Or maybe moving something to defend against this air. But either which way, with that uh, attack when it happened, the units were automatically attacking what was closest to them, not what was doing the damage to them. So they used shots on the stingers that were pointless when they could have been shooting things like the, uh, the ants and the drifters and the sparks and the like. Even little bits of micro like that can uh, tilt a fight in your favour. It really can. Like here, rather than uh, taking out that mech straight away, went for the uh, the enemy first. If the enemy dies, then the mechs will die afterwards. It's just logical. But if you don't have any units left to kill the mechs, then you can't kill the mechs, right? If you're definitely not going to win the fight, then fine, just kill the mechs. But if you are going to win the fight... Kill off the, uh, the units first. Scorched Earth policy applies as always. You're going down, take what you can with you. So bringing in another force now. Again, similar co combination as before. Sparks, Drifters, Grenadiers and a Stinger just for posterity. Right at the front, because why? Um, they, and Klops has put it in a really strange place there. He's moved it in between the base and a proxy factory with grenadiers there. Yeah, strange placement, just popping them voluntarily sandwiching your force. Not the best uh, bit of movement there from Klops, but not one to ease up on the pressure. Attacking on another side now. More bumblebees starting to come out from disc because he knows that he's got the air superiority. Um, ooh, a lot 
blocking this middle down with an artillery. A pelter there. Yucky, yuck, yuck. That's going to be a bit difficult for Klops to get at unless he has something that outranges those pelters. Though, Disc coming in. Now, this is what I meant about having a weak underbelly. You focus on defending a few areas, you leave a few others to fall by the wayside. Disc there, taking out three mechs and getting an opportunity to waltz straight into the base. Down the causeway there, up the plank. That's Scottish, not Irish, but either which way. That doesn't matter. See, that was a bit more Irish. you got to go more, more sinister to be Irish. I know I'm not meaning anything like that. Don't need to start any fights. And now I've gone all West Country. Oh my god. What's going on with these accents? Ah, who knows. Right. What's that? Trying to get a bit of mechs as an expansion. Disc potentially. Go in there and take that fab out. Pops though just struggling to really make some headway. He needs to take out the mechs of Disc. Kind of tricky in a replay from our perspective because there's these two mechs here that just don't have an icon, for example, and then there's that one there. But Klops there did the right thing, retreating. He doesn't have the anti-air support against those bumblebees right now. There's only one stinger in there. Not ideal, trying to keep the stinger alive. Fails to do so. Lots of bumblebees now. I'm going to take out that very, very easily. Indeed, Klops needs more air factories. He's only got the one. He's bringing the slammers out now. And he's got some skitters, not skitters, sorry, spinners, ready to support them as anti-air. If he gets maybe two more spinners... That should be good to dissuade the bumblebees, although if the bumblebees keep growing in number at this rate, we will uh, have a bit of a problem on our hands, Klops. And this is even more disgusting. Pelter creep from disc. <coughs> Excuse me. Disgusting. Disgusting. <laughs> That was a joke. I hope you giggled at your computer screens while watching this. If you didn't giggle, I hope you groaned or face palmed. Either which way, I got a reaction out of you and therefore I win. Ha! If I got a reaction out of you from that reactionary monologue, then I also win. Get destroyed. It's interesting though, we've got T2 on the field from both players now though. We've got Slammers predominantly from Klops. What have we got from Disc? He's also got T2 bots out on the field. Again, also predominantly Slammers. No sp uh, sniper bots just yet though. Disc pushing in against the 4 expansion. Quad expansion out the back, drawing spaghetti. He's thrown spaghetti at the planet and it looks to have stuck in this instance. Ah! Very much so. Klops there. Hammering away at the brick wall that was disc. Didn't have the air support in that game. I feel like he had the large enough army and the ability to sort of move around in different locations, but because he didn't have the air support, his armies just didn't get close enough to do any damage. And it was a real problem. Like when his armies kind of split up and tried to merge over here and this army just got bombed for no reason. Stingers aren't good at mass anti-air. You really want spinners for that. Well folks, I hope you very much enjoyed the video. Thank you very much for watching and do please leave a like if you can. And, uh, let me know in the comments what you learnt from this video. As always, the engagement always helps me out. And if you're not subscribed, please make sure you are. If you are subscribed, share it with people who aren't. That'll all help me out as well. But anyway, in the meantime folks, I've been Marshall. And as always, have a good one.